In this video, we'll be covering how to declare variables in VBA as well as the different methods of declaring variables and the different declaration types. So the first thing we'll do is go over to our Developer tab and open up the VBA window by clicking on Visual Basic under the Code section. Next, we're going to go ahead and insert a module by clicking the Insert dropdown and selecting Module. And then we can create a temporary subroutine. So we'll just say public sub example declarations with our open close parentheses and hit enter. The first thing we're going to talk about is declaration method. Variables can be implicitly declared or explicitly declared. Explicit declarations means we're going to tell the code the variable name and the variable type, and then we can store value into that variable. For example, we'll type dim, which means declare, followed by the variable name. We'll use x bar with the E and V capitalized, and then we tell the system what type of variable this is by typing as, and in this case, we'll say this is an integer variable. Press enter to go ahead and finish that declaration statement. So now the system knows we have a variable named xvar that we will be using to store integers. The system will only accept data in integer form into that particular variable. If we try to feed that variable any other type of data, the system is going to return an error message. So we're going to go ahead and set this variable type by typing xvar equals 4. Now one thing to notice is that after we've declared variables, the system will automatically update your letters to upper or lower case to match the variable, which is a good way to check yourself and make sure you don't make any typos. So in this case, we can see I've typed xvar all lowercase. When I press enter, the E and V are automatically updated to uppercase, so I know I haven't made any typo. If we were to use implicit declaration, however, it might look something like this. I will type mvar equals 9. In this case, we haven't told the system we're declaring anything. We didn't write dim. We also didn't tell the system what type of variable mvar is. We let the system determine the variable type by telling it we want it to store the number 9. In implicit declarations, the system will default to variant type variables, which are sort of chameleon variables that will change their type to match the data. While this seems like a good thing at first, it can actually be really inefficient and will slow down your code, so we typically want to avoid variant type variables. Unlike the auto case updates with explicit variables, if you later type the same implicit variable but the letters are different cases, the system assumes you want to update all of that implicit variable throughout your code to be what you most recently typed. So previous variables will change, but the one you just typed won't. For example, if we type mvar all lowercase and change it to be something else, we'll say 8 and hit enter, we can see all of my mvar variables are now lowercase, which is what I just typed. We'll go ahead and get rid of that line again. Because we want to avoid variant type variables, it's best practice to explicitly declare your variables. And there's actually a setting for this that we can get to by going to Tools and then Options. This checkbox right here, require variable declaration, means the system will not allow implicit variable declaration. It will require you to declare all of your variables, which is a good way to force yourself into explicit variable declaration. So I recommend you usually check this box. But for our examples, we'll leave this unchecked and click OK. Now to test these variables out, we're going to create a little output on our sheet in Excel. I'm going to type cells 2 comma 1 dot value equals x bar and cells 2 comma 2 dot value equals m bar. Talking through this briefly since it's covered in more depth in a future video, Cells tells the system that we are about to refer to a specific cell in our Excel file. The first number represents the row, and the second number represents the column. So here we're looking at second row, first column, and second row, second column, which equates to rows to cells A2 and B2 on our Excel file. To help us see which variables which, we'll type explicit 
and implicit. And now we'll know which of these cells, A2 or B2, applies to which variable type that we've declared. Now we're going to go ahead and test run this code by clicking on macros, making sure example declarations is highlighted, and clicking run. Now we can see our explicit variable came up as 4 and our implicit variable came up as 9. If we go back into our code, we can double check this and we see this makes sense so everything has run correctly. Now we're going to try something a little different. We're going to change the values that we put into each of these variables. So instead of storing the number 4 in my x-bar, I'm going to try to store text, which we do by putting quote, a quote. So now we're going to try to store the letter a into our x-var, which we've told the system is supposed to be an integer. So if we go ahead and try to run this, we see we get a mismatch error. If we click debug, it will take us to the line that Excel sees as an error. And we can see it's brought us to this x-var equals line, which means the system has recognized that this is text that we're trying to store in this variable, but we've told the system to expect integers into this variable. Go ahead and click the stop button up here to end your code. We're going to reset this to be 4 to get rid of that error message, and instead we're going to set a into our mvar variable. Go ahead and run the code again by clicking on macros, highlighting the code, and clicking run. And we can see this has updated to show that our implicit variable correctly stored the value a. Again, this is because our implicit variable here is stored as a variant type variable, which means it will change its type to fit the data that we try to feed it. So in summary, there's a difference between explicit and implicit variables, and generally speaking, it's best practice to use explicit variables when you declare your variables. The next thing we're going to talk about is the method of declaration. There's two different types. There's global and there's local variables. These different declarations we have here are both local declarations, meaning these variables only live within this subroutine that we've created. If we were to create a second subroutine, We'll come down here and say public sub second. This system won't recognize xvar or mvar if we try to put them into this second subroutine. As an example, we'll say cells 31.value equals xvar and cells 32.value equals mvar. Now we know that we've already declared these variables up in our first subroutine. An xvar is explicitly declared within this subroutine, whereas mvar is implicitly declared. If we go back to our Excel file and use macros, select second, and try to run this, we can see nothing shows up into these cells. This is because if we go back to our code, we see that xvar and mvar are only used in this top subroutine and not in the second subroutine. So xvar and mvar were never set values in our second subroutine. Now let's say that we want to pass these values between these subroutines. So if I set xvar up in this first one, I want it to be the same in my second one. And I don't want to have to continue to redeclare my variables and reset the variable values. This is a case where you would use something called a global variable. So we'll go up to the very top, give ourselves a couple lines and we're going to declare a third new global variable. In order to do this, we're going to type public instead of dim. We'll create a global var, and we'll tell it that this global var is an integer. Now you'll note that I actually moved this declaration to be outside of either of my subroutines. This is because I want to be able to use this global variable throughout any subroutines I have, not just these two local subroutines. So now I've declared a global var as an integer using the word public instead of dim. If I move down into this code and I then set a value to my global var, and we'll say this equals 7, I'll add a new line here to show what my global var value is. And then down into the second subroutine, I'll leave these two here since they are still local variables and we still don't have a value for them in our second subroutine. 
but we are going to add a third line and we'll set this equal to our global var. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my Excel file. I'll type global into the cell so we can tell which variable is global. And now I am first going to run our example declarations again, because this is where we told the system initially what that global variable is going to be. So we'll click run. And we can see my global variable has showed up here as being seven. Now we're going to run the second macro we created. Click run. And we can see again, my explicit and implicit variables belong solely to the first macro because that's where we declared them and we declared them locally. But our global variable, which we declared publicly outside of our subroutines, can be passed between all of our subroutines once it's been set. So it appeared in our second subroutine as its own value. So now we understand the different types and methods of declaring variables, and we can move on with our Excel VBA coding tutorials.